the non infective complications are also to be significantly attended to or to be recorded or to be looked for in these patients what are the non infective complications of long term complications of patients on uh, mechanical ventilatory support the long term complications are related to tracheomalacia tracheomalacia means the cartilage has lost its uh, elasticity the trachea doesn't uh, retain its uh, semi lunar shape and it collapses once the stent effect of the endotracheal tube is removed so these patients will have dynamic airway collapse uh, as, and this is more and more recognized in critically ill patients who are hypoxemic in shock at the time of initiation of ventilatory support if you don't follow your uh, protocols and you don't measure your cuff pressures regularly or you use a bigger tube than is necessary so tracheal stenosis is something that is catastrophic you extubate the patient the patient can't breathe um, and then you try to intubate you can't intubate the patient is in struggle is struggling and this is something which is a disastrous complication and sometimes subglottic stenosis because again of an inappropriately sized tube or inappropriately monitored cuff pressures both tracheal stenosis and subglottic stenosis are disastrous consequences for the patient but most commonly reported long term non infective complication amongst ventilated patient is diaphragmatic atrophy and this diaphragmatic atrophy if you look at electron microscopic studies in experimental animals seems to be starting as early as 48 to 72 hours and the solution unfortunately seems to be to allow these patients to be breathing spontaneously as soon as possible while that is good to look at from a scientific angle and probably from a physiological angle it may not be the right, uh, possible in patients who are mechanically ventilated for ARDS so the neuromuscular blockade you use some of the antibiotics you use these are all problems or agents which can contribute um, we, these are all patient problems which you can contribute uh, to the development of diaphragmatic atrophy uh, so you need to pay attention to how how your neuromuscular blockade is being titrated uh, and how uh, you are actually lightening the sedation and how you are monitoring the diaphragm using the ultrasound to monitor the diaphragmatic thickness is an in now an integral part of daily assessment of patients who are ventilated for a long term the other problem which can happen in patients who are ventilated for a long term is deep venous thrombosis because of the sluggish venous return there there is stasis in the peripheries and mechanical ventilation is a risk factor for dvt and subsequent pte so it is recommended that patients who are hypoxemic who are hypotensive should be on at least dual mode thromboprophylaxis with a mechanical device as well as pharmacoprophylaxis with some form of heparin either low molecular weight heparin or unfractionate heparin or fondaparinx because it's an important risk factor for dvt and pte so the cardiovascular instability the gastrointestinal complications the renal dysfunction they will all compromise the physiological reserves of an individual so at some point of time when you actually succeed in getting this patient's uh, numbers good and try to wean them off ventilatory support the uh, they become dependent on the ventilator because their neuromuscular status does not allow them uh, to uh, actually breathe well the neuromuscular uh, weakness actually prevents them uh, from uh, weaning successfully of ventilatory support so these are some of the long term complications of mechanical ventilatory support now comes the pro immediate problem or the most pressing problem of infective complications so because you have bypassed the natural defenses of the airway you end up causing infections in the lung and you can cause infections elsewhere so the infections can happen anywhere from the upper airway down to the lungs if there is only infection of the upper airway 
with no parenchymal involvement, no compromise in oxygenation, no increase in the sputum load of the patient, you now tend to label it as infective tracheobronchitis or first ventilator associated tracheobronchitis, where you do an endotracheal suction, there is sputum, you culture it, you get a gram negative bug, but there is no evidence of pneumonia on a chest x ray. The patient's FIO2 requirements have not increased and he's able to wean off ventilatory support. On the other hand, you have a situation where the chest x ray shows infiltrates, there is leukocytosis, there is increased sputum load, the FIO2 requirements have increased, the lung compliance has increased, has decreased. So this, this probably suggests a ventilator associated infective condition, that is ventilator associated pneumonia. While the lung and the upper airway are the most commonly infected uh, components during mechanical ventilation, the inappropriate use of antimicrobials, the inappropriate use of stress ulcer prophylaxis can predispose these patients to what is called as Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea. Mechanically ventilated patients are two to three times at a higher risk of developing uh, C. diff associated diarrhea than patients who are not mechanically ventilated. So that's another important thing we need to be watchful for. As we discussed in the early part of the presentation, putting a nasogastric tube is an important risk factor for uh, sinusitis. And if you don't pick up this problem and you let the or a nasogastric tube stay in place for a longer time, then you could end up with a pan sinusitis, which will present as a pyrexia of unknown origin or a new onset fever in the intensive care unit. These patients who are hypoxemic, who are hypotensive, who are metabolically unstable, who require a lot of support, cannot be moved from one position to another uh, for every two hours as you would do for a stable patient and intrinsically because of the added malnutrition these patients are at a high risk of pressure source so that is something uh, we all need to be looking at while mechanically ventilating uh, these patients <laughs>